We're going to do something today that I've always wanted to do and never got a chance to do at school, and that's to make a crystal garden. And this is something where you take a load of different metal salts and by putting it in the right solution, you can get these crystals to grow and you can get something that look, well, is essentially inorganic and turn it into something that looks as if it's organic, like a plant. Chemical gardens are something that many people make as children. I've never made, been able to get one to work. So I'm quite envious when my colleagues make such a beautiful one. But the way it works, or the chemistry behind it, is relatively simple. Yeah, we've uh, got a lot of liquid in here. This is sodium silicate and water, so it's a 50-50 mix of the two. So we've got, oh, just over three litres of liquid. We're going to try and pour this in here without getting it everywhere. It's based on the solution of sodium silicate. Some people used to call it isinglass. In the old days, people used it to preserve eggs. You put your egg in and it covered the eggshell and stop the oxygen getting in. Why would you want to preserve an egg? So you can keep it a long time without it going bad. Oh, and you'd still eat the egg? You'd still eat the egg afterwards. Okay. Let me get rid of this. Uh, ideally, we want big lumps of our metal salt, so we're quite fortunate. This is manganese chloride, and we've got a nice big lump here, if I can get it out, without breaking it. There we are. OK, and this is going to get dropped in, and we'll see where it lands, and we'll see what happens. In it goes. Leave that going. Well, I think one of the reasons that people like them is because they're interesting experiments that last quite a long time. You can put them on the windowsill, and if you have a large container, they will go on growing for hours, if not days. Whereas most chemical reactions, there's a bang or a flash, and it's over. OK, unfortunately, I've not got huge lumps of this, this is nickel, nickel nitrate, so we'll just pop that in and just see what happens. So already it's starting to sprout these tendrils, it looks really like some kind of alien life form now. And I'll put some more in in a bit, I'll just show you what the other sorts are that I've, I've got. Next one I've got, it's a really pretty colour, and this is cobalt and I'll grab as big a chunk as I can. Oh, yeah. Oh, this one's not so easy to put in because it's quite liquid. Um, it's, a it's a copper salt, this one. So pop that in. In a chemical garden, you have a container of sodium silicate and you put crystals of transition metal because it's nice and coloured at the bottom. The transition metal reacts to form a sort of gooey layer of silicate, the copper or chromium silicate. And this silicate is filled with a liquid that is slightly less dense than the um, solution because you've precipitated out the silicate. So there's, it's closer to pure water. So it tends to rise. And as it rises, more and more solution comes out at the top. And so it gradually grows in like a thin tube. And as it goes up, it gradually thickens the walls so it becomes stronger and stronger. So it will go up and up without collapsing. And if you get the colours right, it can look really quite like a garden. Right then, the next one we do have big lumps of, and this one is calcium chloride. So let's grab a chunk of that. So a bit like an egg shape there. Um, let's put it in that bit there. See if anything happens with that. Okay, and the final thing we've got is iron chloride, but this, as you can see in the container, is really granular, so it's not lumpy. There's one lump, and I'm going to try and drop this in without it scattering everywhere. Think about there. Oh, I think another one or two lumps of cobalt and then we've seeded our garden. So we'll leave it for some time and see what happens. Uh, about there. Oh. Because the solution rising depends on gravity. 
that some things are less dense than others, there have been several attempts to try and grow crystal gardens in space, particularly on the space shuttle, because there there is zero gravity. So what will happen? My friend David Jones devised a very elegant apparatus where he could grow four chemical gardens in a piece of apparatus that weights less than five kilos. So that's not much more than a heavy book. And of course, everything on the space shuttle has to be fantastically safe. You don't want chemicals swimming around and hitting the astronauts in the face. And he did a number of experiments, or rather, he set up some experiments which the astronauts did. And they were quite surprising because they didn't behave very reproducibly. Some of it, he published quite a serious scientific paper here. And what was really interesting was the weird shapes that he got. And the first few gardens, he's got nice photos in here. The first few gardens were a bit boring. He got these rather um, fat tubes coming out. In the next garden, in his cobalt garden, he got something that looked really quite exciting. Looks like some weird organ that you've taken from some sort of creature. And my favourite one was the one that he grew, it's on the next page, here in a magnesium nickel garden where it looks really weird. It was not clear exactly what was determining these, but David's idea was that it's probably the difference in interfacial tensions, the surface forces between the growing silicate film and the main solution which determine things. But although these look quite big, if you actually look at this picture of them growing in space, they're quite small, only a fraction of a centimetre across. I shall never forget the sight. The vessel of crystallisation was three quarters full of slightly muddy water, that is, dilute water glass. And from the sandy bottom there strove upwards a grotesque little landscape of variously coloured growths. A confused vegetation of blue, green and brown shoots which reminded one of algae, mushrooms, attached polyps, also moss. Then mussels, fruit pods, little trees or twigs from trees, here and there of limbs. It was the most remarkable sight I ever saw, and remarkable not so much for its appearance, strange and amazing though that was, as on account of its profoundly melancholy nature. For when Father Leverkuhn asked us what we thought of it, and we timidly answered him that they might be plants, no, he replied, they are not, they only act that way, but do not think the less of them. Precisely because they do, because they try as hard as they can, they are worthy of all respect. That was Thomas Mann's book, Dr. Faustus. So he was actually describing the uh, Crystal Garden. So I thought it was a, quite a nice thing to uh, write about something so chemical. Yeah.